Hello everybody! Welcome to Ina After Dark and actually this is a very special episode of Ina After Dark because we are recording it for the podcast and this is episode 50 of the podcast! We have reached our golden years which is super super exciting for me hopefully for you too, to be a part of this whole journey that has been this podcast. And with this 50th episode, we are rebranding and renaming the podcast. How's that for awesome? So before we were the corporate trailblazers with Ina Coveney, and now we are trailblazing out of corporate life with Ina Coveney. So I am super excited about this rebrand because it makes a little bit more sense. One thing that was happening in my business early on is that people didn't quite know what to make of it. It was called corporate trailblazers and it kind of sounds like you are in corporate, you are trailblazing your way up the ladder where really my message was no, get out of the game, get out of the ladder, find your own ladder to climb on. So it didn't quite make sense when you first read it. But now when you see trailblazing out of corporate life, it's super easy to see. I'm trying to get you guys to see the light, <laughs> to see that there are other ways for you to really enjoy what you do and to make money and have that, that freedom of time and choice. I really don't like calling it financial freedom because when we think of financial freedom what comes to mind is you know being rich right is not having to worry about money like that that those are things we think of when really the things that are bringing life to us the things that we really want for our life is, is to be able to do whatever we want whenever we want to have freedom of time and choice not to have somebody out there in a stuffy office somewhere dictate where we're going to be at a particular time what we're going to do with that time is it even something that we like or something that we sign up for it doesn't matter we don't want to be under somebody else's thumb anymore we want to be our own boss which i have been very lucky to experience this for the past 15 months and i'm telling you i want you on this side of the wall because it's amazing because today um, I came back from a trip yesterday. I spent the weekend, the long weekend, the Memorial Day weekend in Toronto visiting my sister and I had a great time. I didn't work once that entire weekend other than posting Instagram stories, right? That's all I did, just post Instagram stories. But I really had the chance to just enjoy the time. In fact, guys, this was the first trip I have ever taken, ever, ever, first flight I've ever taken where I didn't bring a computer with me. Usually when I went on long trips, I used to take, you know, if I didn't take my big behemoth computer, right? I took my little computer, my little tablet. It's a Windows tablet that also you can hook a keyboard to it and it was like a little laptop. Then they started asking me to take it out because it looks like a laptop, it's bigger than a phone, so they have to take it out of security. Then my husband did something revolutionary. He actually listened to me and he gave me a keyboard, a Bluetooth keyboard for my phone, which meant and it has a little stand so I can stand up my phone and I can type, which means that I don't need that computer anymore. I can pretty much do anything on my phone without my thumbs getting all tired and cramped up in carpal, carpal tunnel E, right? So first time ever I didn't have to travel with a computer. I had everything I needed just right in my purse. So why am I telling you all of this? Because that's the kind of freedom that I want you to have. I decided to take that trip a week before it happened. I heard my sister was going to be in town. I kind of knew that she was going to be around, uh, but I didn't know if I was going to be doing it or not, if I was going to hop on a plane or not. I decided that at the last minute and the, the tickets were not cheap, guys. Do not do as I do, just do as I say, all right? go and get cheap tickets, book your flights well in advance. But because this was important to me, I decided I am going to live the life that I want to live. I'm going to be the kind of person who goes and sees her pregnant sister. The only time I'll ever get to see her pregnant, possibly in my lifetime, because the next time I see her won't be until November. This is the kind of person that I want to be. I want to be the kind of person who puts family first, puts that kind of experience first, puts those memories, creating those memories first, right? So it was Ina, 
you get to keep a thousand dollars in your bank account or you get to see your sister pregnant and have a wonderful girls weekend what's it gonna be I chose the weekend and I still don't miss those thousand dollars that's the kind of thinking I want you guys to have. So all the stuff that I'm telling you right now is totally related to the point that I wanted to make today. And this is either going to blow your mind or it's going to be like, yes, I know that and that's how I want to live my life. And thank you, Ina, for reiterating this, for giving me the validation that I needed here. Scott says, family first is great, but when you have to work at a job you don't really like, family first means staying, yes. And hi, hi Scott. So Scott, I completely understand where you're coming from. Because when we are working at our job, it means that we want to tell ourselves we need to be responsible, right? We need to be responsible, we need to stay at our jobs so that we can put our family first. So in this group, what I encourage you to think about is the alternative. It's not all black or white. The alternative is to start working on something on the side right? To start to make money in a different way that is going to get you to that time freedom, time, choice freedom that you really want, right? So that you don't have to stay at a job. So you don't have to do anything by anybody's rules anymore. So you can just do it on your own. But these things take time, right? These things are not, it, these things don't just happen when you're ready. And I saw, I saw a, you are Scott tell me more about it tell me what you're doing um, and I saw I saw a quote this weekend right I saw a quote this weekend and I'm like I think these people were meant it was meant for people who are looking to drink water <laughs> they're trying to sell water bottles to me but it, it spoke to me so much it was a Japanese proverb that said um, By the time you're thirsty, it's too late to dig a well, right? So that's why Scott says, yes, you're working on your side business and it's a long road, and it is. So I'm encouraging everybody who hasn't jumped on that bandwagon yet to really think about this, about the fact that it's not when you're ready that you're going to say, okay, I'm ready to quit and I'm going to start my business because that business takes time. Like Scott said, that business is a long road for you to replace your salary, for you to make as much money as you were before so you can support your family. It's all possible, but it doesn't happen overnight. And that really stops us, especially in our culture. Because I don't know if you guys have have heard about that study, right? Um, I heard about this uh, one time, I think it was on an NPR show, about how our language has predisposed us to be procrastinators because we have a very definite um, tense in our language for the future, right? In some other countries, in some other languages, they actually use the same tense to mean future, right? I believe it is in Chinese, they don't have like the future tense. You can understand by context what the person is saying, but they're always speaking in the present tense. So when you're always speaking about yourself in the present tense, even if it's something, talking about something that you are going to do, you still relate to yourself. You're telling your brain, you're telling yourself, that what you are doing is something that you what you're doing in the future is something that applies to you to the you today while in our language because we have a very definite tense for future we tend to separate those two things so an example that they were giving that i thought was genius was when we're going to bed late right and we have to get up early in the morning but guess what we had a long day and we want to finish watching this episode of Frasier because Freaking, I love Frasier and this is my guilty pleasure and I want to have a good time tonight because I had a tough day, right? We're telling ourselves, you know what? I do have to get up early in the morning, but that's tomorrow Ina's problem, right? That's not my problem. Tomorrow's Ina will have to deal with it. So it makes us procrastinators. Uh, it's something that is like embedded in our culture, but it's not impossible to break. So that's why in this episode, what I wanted to talk to you about was this was this starting sooner rather than later this is something that i've been there it's something that um, i always keep in mind that i want to help future me as much as possible so i do as much as i can now i do the dishes tonight rather than leaving it for tomorrow's me um, when i was applying for my mba um, i was actually doing this with a friend of mine 
who also was thinking about getting her MBA. And I thought, okay, right now I'm not married. I don't have kids. This was 12 years ago. I'm not married. I don't have kids. My company is going to pay for the MBA 100% if I apply for this now. So I am going to take care of this now. Even though I'm having a great time with my life, I am busy. We're all busy. We all feel like maybe there was a time when we weren't as busy. But if you had asked that person, they would have told you, yes, I was busy then. You were busy with work. You were busy with visiting family. You were busy with everything, taking care of family members, busy all the time. But I'm like, I'm going to do this now so that I don't shoot myself in the foot later on. Later when I'm married and I have children and I have less time, I'll be like, why didn't I get my MBA? So I'm going to do it now. So I always try to think that way. Is there anything that I can do today? Right? Um, and Scott agrees. Scott says, that's a, that's a smart comment. Tomorrow's me is being cheated by today's me. Exactly. I tell my husband, he's more like uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, right? Uh, because his nighttime me is screwing over daytime him. And I try to tell him this at night, like, please go to bed at a reasonable time because tomorrow you're going to be dead tired. You're going to be like, you're going to be a monster tomorrow. When he really doesn't get sleep, he turns into Mr. Hyde, right? And he's like, no, 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 I'm going to be fine. He just screws himself over for the next day. So always start to think of what can you do today to help out you later, right? So one of the things that I wanted to tell you about is for those of you who know that they want to do something more with their life, but they don't know what, and they're kind of waiting for that time when they're going to be ready for it. I'm telling you that by the time that you're ready, it's too late to dig a well. By the time you're ready, you're going to be so frustrated that who knows, you may end up actually quitting your job without having anything lined up. And going back to the conversation I'm having here with Scott, that's not responsible. You have a family to support. Now, that moment could happen next week, that moment could happen a year from now. That moment could happen five years from now. You know that you're not ready to quit your job yet, but that moment will come because you're already thinking about this. So you know that moment is going to come when you get screwed over at work because of something, when they lay you off. This has happened to so many people who thought they had a secure job and they get laid off, right? Who their manager changes and they don't want to work for that manager like anymore, right? Something happens at work that gives us that little kick, right? Management is being unreasonable. They're not letting me leave at five o'clock so that I can go to my son's school, right? They're not letting me, or they're making me work on weekends, mandatory work on weekends. All these things happen at work. And at one point you're going to reach your breaking point and you're not going to be ready because you didn't dig the well. So this is when you start. So when I name this episode, that game that you're playing into that you're really not aware of is this game of not seeing the big picture. You're playing into this situation where you are basically entering a room. Imagine a maze, right? Imagine a maze that is not really straight, um, you know, straight paths, right? That is basically going from a room to a room, sort of like an escape the room type of situation right? So you're locked in a room and you can't see what's in the next room and you can't even see how many rooms you had ahead of you, right? You can't even see how many rooms there are before you make it to that end goal that you have. You're stuck in a room and you just have a problem in front of you, right? So the idea is that to get out of each room, you have to foresee, okay, what is it that I need to do in order to make it to that next stage. And that's really hard to do, especially if you live in that room, okay? So if you are right now in the room where you are working full time and you are very busy and you're really not making any leeway to get to the next room, to get to the next stage in your life, or the next stage in your side business, or even start one, you are stuck in that room and you're at the mercy of the game players, right? Of the game makers of the people who are telling you like, these are all the things that I want to keep you busy with in that room, right? You're just playing into a hamster wheel. That's not going anywhere. So one of the things that I preach here and you guys hear me talk about all the time, I've said this a million times, is getting yourself a coach, right? And this is for people who are, who are ready, 
right? Who are like, I know what my side business is. I know that I want to make this happen. You know what happens when you get yourself a coach? It's almost like being in that game, right? And then hiring one of the game makers and saying like, hey, will you help me out? Get out of this. And what a coach does is a coach shows you the maze. Isn't that an amazing analogy? That you're stuck in a room and you don't know what's next, right? You don't even know how to get out of the room because the game makers are just keeping you busy, right? They're keeping you doing what you think you're supposed to be doing. And then you hire someone who knows the game, who knows how to get you out the other end. And that person shows you the maze and they tell you, and I'm gonna draw it here. And they tell you, look, you're stuck in this room right now. And to get out, to make it to the next stage, you have to do these things, all right? And then you're in the next stage. You're like, okay, coach, what do I do next? And they show you, they show you the way. They start to show you the room. And the reason I, I phrase it this way is because I've had experience with this myself and with my clients, that there are times that I could show them the maze and they're still not ready to see it. So that becomes a challenge for me because now I have to kind of scale back and say, okay, you're not ready to see the maze. So let me show you your room. And I'm gonna show you what are the things you need to do to get to the door out of the room. And that freaks them out. They're like, don't show me that door. I'm like, you need to see the door. If you don't see the door, you're never gonna get out of the room. Right? So that's really what coaching does, which is what I do, which is what I come here and talk to you guys about all day long and do all these in after dark episodes about, is to get you to see that there is a maze, that you are in a room and that you're going nowhere unless you can find somebody that can show you the game so that you can start to get out of those rooms. So uh, what I did have for you, and this is for people again who um, they know that there's more out there, right? They're listening to me and they're like, yes, I know, at least I know that there is a maze. I don't know what I have to do to find my door. I don't know how many rooms there are, but I know that there's a maze, right? You, you've gotten that kind of awareness. I know that there's a maze. I just don't know what to do. What's my future going to be like? What business model and am, am I going to create? What am I going to work on, right? What I did is I created a passion quiz. All right. And I wanted to kind of share that with you guys, because I created this quiz based on conversations that I was having early in my business with people who wanted to see the maze, but just didn't know what to do. And I created this based on exactly those conversations because I, I found myself having the same conversation over and over again. And I'm like, wow, can you imagine if people could just walk through these steps, walk themselves through these steps and start to see that there's a door right? And start to imagine what the maze must look like. You might not know exactly what it looks like. We never know. We never know what the maze looks like. But it's like, you, if you can start to imagine what those steps would be, right? So in this quiz, I guide you through identifying your skills, identifying your passions, identifying what business models would be great for you, and then start to see, start to shape, right? What an exit strategy out of this particular room that you find yourself in would be. If you want to get a hand on that passion quiz, just go to inacoveni.com slash passion, but you have to spell Coveni right. It ends in E-Y, okay? Everybody usually forgets that E before the Y. Inacoveni.com slash passion will get you into that quiz, okay? And um, I, I really think that it's my responsibility, like it's my job to come and tell you guys these things to come and tell you that just like Scott, who's working on his side business and you told me what it was, you told me I'm a writer, we're kings of procrastination. No kidding, right? Like I, you know, I am not a writer, but I write emails and I write content. And yes, procrastination is a real thing, but we have to do it. We have to go and figure it out so that we can find the door to the next room right? It's something we have to do. So I see it as my responsibility to come and tell you guys that I've seen the maze. I've seen the maze and have, I'm already helping a lot of people find their doors and to move from stage to stage 
from room to room to get them to their goals, right? It's through this. It's, I also invested in myself. I also invested in group programs, in one-on-one -on -one coaching. Like I have not stopped investing in these things because I know there's always somebody out there who can look at the bigger picture and tell me, I've seen the maze. I'm going to show you how to get out. I'm going to show you the way and go that way, right? But we're not going to do it when we're ready. By the time we're ready, it's too late to dig the well. And I'm going to find that quote because I posted it on Instagram and I took a snapshot of it. I'm like, oh my God, that quote is genius. It will be too late. By the time you're thirsty, it's too late to dig that well. You start now. Now, it may not, like usually what people get hung up on is that they feel like I'm telling them to quit their job now, right? So when I talk to people about what I do, hey, I coach people who work full time, start side businesses so they can replace their salary and eventually do it full time. I get people all the time tell me, oh, I don't hate my job. Boom, blocked. I don't hate my job. I like my job. I'm like, who said this had anything to do with liking your job or disliking your job? This has to do with wanting freedom of time and freedom of choice, right? And with a regular job, that tends to be counterintuitive. That tends to be something that you don't normally get when you're working for somebody else. So what you do is you smart up. You stop closing yourself to opportunities and you start saying yes to opportunities. So you can start to see what that maze would look like for you. So once you go through that passion quiz, I would love for you guys to come back to the Facebook group and for everybody in the podcast, just go to inacoveny.com slash Facebook. That will take you straight into my group. I want you to come and tell me what you found out. Okay. What did you find? What was that thing? All right. Um, what was that thing that it made you realize? Like, wow, I had never thought about making money with something that I already know how to do. Thank you so much, Scott. It was nice to see you here. Thank you for the interaction. This was fun. <clears throat> so I want you to come into the group and tell me that. What did you realize? What did you learn about yourself? Tell me more. So let's start a conversation. Start saying yes to starting conversations, to things that people are out there offering that you may be able to take advantage of. And after that, I want you to book a call with me. You go to inacoveny.com slash call. I opened up my calendar because I'd love to start to have more conversations with you guys about what is it that you want to do. So we can start to show you the maze and we can start to show you what room you're in, what is the next room look like, what does the next room look like, and what you're going to do to get out of it. All right? This is not about quitting your job. This is about getting freedom of time and freedom of choice. And if you ever want that, don't wait five years from now until you've gotten majorly screwed over at work and you decide I'm not gonna do this anymore. You start today. So when that happens, you say, thank goodness I listened to that Ina after dark where she told me to start now. No more procrastination, we start today. All right guys, that's what I had for you today. Go get that quiz in acoveny.com slash passion. And then after that, come over to the Facebook group, book a call. Let's talk about your next steps. Let's start finding your way out of this maze in acoveny.com slash call and we'll talk. All right, guys, it's been a pleasure. And now, because I don't have any meetings tonight, I get to go downstairs and make some fondue for my husband. We're going to cuddle up on the couch, maybe do a little bit of work on our computers and hang out and have some fondue. You guys like fondue? Cheese fondue? Oh my God, it's one of our favorites. Like every week, one night is fondue night. All right, guys, let me know what you thought of this episode. I would love to hear from you. So just in the comments here or in your iTunes app, leave me a review. Tell me what your main takeaway was. What did you learn? What are you, what are you gonna put into action now? Because then I'll feel like I did my job. All right, guys, nice to see you here and I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye, guys.
Yay, thank you for watching. If you like that video, remember to subscribe right here to get notified of new episodes and don't miss the podcast version, Trailblazing Out of Corporate Life. Go look it up and subscribe. I'll see you later. Bye.